morning, good morning, good morning. How are you this morning? I do hope that each and every one of you had a wonderful, restful weekend. And that you're all well and uh, ready to face the challenges of this brand new work week. Yeah. Well, here at the Classic, it's the same thing. Same old, same old. Keeping you abreast, keeping you informed, and of course, keeping you entertained as well. And of course, this morning, we're going to start off with the word for the day. Yeah, and the word today is lycanthropy, right? Lycanthropy. And it refers to the power or ability to take the shape and characteristics of a wolf through witchcraft or magic. It can also mean a delusion that one has become a wolf. It is spelled L-Y-C-A-N-T-H-R-O-P-Y. Mm. The power to our uh, ability to take the shape of and characteristics of a wolf through witchcraft or magic. It can also mean a delusion that one has become a wolf. And it can be used in the sentence in this way. The 1941 film The Wolfman starred Lon Chaney Jr. as a man cursed with lycanthropy. Mm. Is that a funny one, boy? <laughs> Who wants to take the shape or characteristics of a wolf? And you know, that's that's a, a very topical issue. One of these days we must talk about this thing, this witchcraft thing, boy. Understand? You know, it's ranting and raving. Yeah. Folks, it's 25 minutes until 7 o'clock. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you this morning? I want to say good morning to my good partner, Wendell, man. How you doing? Nice. Good. Okay, let's look at the thought for the day, right? We've got the UN quiz coming up, but the thought for the day... If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. <laughs> I love this. If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, let me just quickly tell you what, uh, let me uh, say what the question is, the quiz this morning. It's, it's a bit lengthy, but uh, nonetheless, you ought to listen carefully. And remember, we will be announcing the date when you can come to collect your prizes, those of you who won already. So listen this. There are many UN initiatives, uh, programs, projects being implemented on the ground in Grenada involving over 14 UN agencies. But there are only four joint programs, and joint programs, we refer to it as JP, right? Now, a joint program involves several UN agencies working in partnership with each other to achieve implementation. The Grenada Spotlight Initiative is one such joint program. Now, here the question. What problem does the joint program address or tackle? I'm going to take that again. There are many UN initiatives, programs, projects being implemented on the ground in Grenada involving over 14 UN agencies. But there are only four joint programs. A joint program involves several UN agencies working in partnership with each other to achieve implementation. The Grenada Spotlight Initiative is one such joint program. Now, what problem does this joint program address or tackle? Give me a ring on the tingling, 435-2041. And let's hear if you've got the answer. Nice. 435-2041. Call me. Give me a call. Mm-hmm. So while I am with the first caller, let me tell you what we'll be looking at in the buzz this morning. Uh, so many things to talk about. All right. Uh, the Grenada Senior Netball Team returns home after placing fourth in the America's World Cup qualifiers. Return to G... All right. Okay. Good. Nice. 
Okay, from a Girl Scout brownie in Grenada to a deputy commanding general in the U.S. Army, a Grenadian woman tells a story of success within the U.S. Armed Forces. I like that story. Yeah, the first African-American woman serving in the U.S. Army Reserve Medical Corps and the first Grenadian to reach the rank of Brigadier General. Mm. Grenada, 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 man. A little rock, but oh my gosh. Now, October was the month of the elderly. What did you do to show support for those who have paved the way? Minister Tevin Andrews in Carrick, who is pushing the transformational agenda, recognized the senior citizen in Carrick for their years of service. That's a nice story, too. Good, nice. Uh -huh. Also, officials from the Grenada Union of Teachers say they have seen improvements in some schools that are under infrastructural repair, but others are stagnant. Lester Karaku is one of the schools the duty is concerned about. Karaku in the news this morning, that's crazy boy, right? All right, and uh, some of Grenada's cultural practitioners, as well as Spice Mass Corporation and Grenada Tourism Authority officials, well, they left Grenada on Friday to attend the first Tobago Carnival celebrations. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice one. And um, if we get a chance, the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy N. J. Antoine, says that while they are encouraging Grenada and the rest of the Caribbean to go fully digital with their operations, they are mindful that the populations need to be educated on cyber security and cyber hygiene. Mm. A lot to talk about this morning. Let's see how much, how many of them we can get through this morning but um wow this one seems technical difficult nobody's calling all right there are some un uh, there are many un initiatives programs and projects being implemented on the ground in grenada involving over 14 un agencies but there are only four joint programs now a joint program involves several un agencies working in partnership with each other to achieve implementation the Grenada Spotlight Initiative is one such joint program. Now, what problem does the joint, this joint program address or tackle? Give me a ring. 435-2041. And just like that, you can win yourself a fabulous prize. Yeah. A lot of words, while well, the response is simple. Mm -hmm. Four three five two zero four one. So that's the number. Call me. I want to say a very special good morning and happy birthday to a goodly gentleman, Mr. Marvin Bristow. Um, today is your birthday. Well, you're originally from Paradise, but now you reside in St. Cloud in St. Andrew. Your dad and the rest of the family want to wish you a very, very happy birthday today. Yeah. And also, happy birthday to you, Jelani Charles of Tempe. You've got birthday greetings coming from your mom, your dad, your sisters, and of course, your special auntie, Tanti. <laughs> You're celebrating your sixth birthday today. Happy, happy birthday to you, Jelani. Wish you all the best and hope that you live to see many and many more birthdays to come. Nice. Good morning to the folks on the Sister Isles of Karyaku and Pity Martinique. Hope you all have enough rain or had enough rain over the weekend or the past week that will fill up the cisterns. <laughs> Karakou is an interesting place, you know. Yeah. I've got a good friend who has gotten his uh, residency in Karakou now. Why is in Batman? <laughs> good morning. Nice. 
Okay, so no one is calling to participate in the quiz this morning. It sounds a bit tough, but it's not really. In the next uh, 30 seconds or so, I'll give you the response because today is the culmination of the UN quiz. Yeah. Nice. There are many UN initiatives, programs, projects uh, being implemented on the ground in Grenada involving over 14 uh, UN agencies. But there are only four joint programs. Now, a joint program involves several UN agencies working in partnership with each other to achieve implementation. The Grenada Spotlight Initiative is one such joint program. What does this joint program address or tackle? Mm -hmm. All right, in the interest of time, we've got the AM edition of News, Sports and the Weather forthcoming. So I'll give you the response because no one seems to be calling. All right, the problem that it tackles is uh, to end all sorts of violence against women and girls. Gender-based violence. Uh -huh, to end family violence. While on that, I want to say good morning to you, Mr. Tyrone Buckmeyer and the entire team there. Mm -hmm. Good morning. How are you all doing? Nice. All right, folks, this is where we, we break off from here. We've got to go do the AM edition of News, Sports and the Weather. We'll f uh, resume on the flip side of seven as we look at what's buzzing on the social media platforms. And, um, yeah, we'll get back to that. So those of you who are looking at us on TV, well, you've got the a rebroadcast of Friday evening's news, television news, of course. And those of you here with me on Classic, we've got the AM edition coming up. We'll be back after seven. Total is one of the world's largest oil companies with a top quality line of lubricants. Total Lubricants has a full product line from passenger cars, motorcycle, heavy industrial equipment, mining, trucking, agriculture, and manufacturing machines and vehicles. Total Lubricants, winning championships in motorsports, including Formula One and World Rally Championships. Total Lubricants are available at all Rubis service stations, leading automotive shops, and distributed by Huggins. Huggins. From Television Center at the Grenada Broadcasting Network, I'm Ken Roy Batiste. Innocent or guilty? That's the verdict all parties are waiting. Now that 24-year-old Randy John of St. David was charged with capital murder of 17-year-old Quinette Johnson in 2018. Winnipeg Thomas has this update. On Wednesday, a jury is expected to give their verdict on 24-year-old Randy John of St. David, who is charged with the capital murder of 16-year-old Quinnett Johnson. The teenager was last seen on Thursday, the 18th of October 2018, when she left home to visit relatives in Springs, following a dispute with her sister. Her partially decomposed body was later found in a vacant house in Charlottesville in St. David on the 25th of October. The autopsy conducted revealed that Johnson died as a result of asphyxiation and was believed to have died between the 19th and the 20th of October 2018. Jerry Edwin, lawyer of Randy John, says that his client admits that he was with Quinnett the night of her death but maintained his innocence. He was charged initially with non-capital murder but in the wisdom of the director of public prosecution, those charges were elevated to capital murder because the office of the DPP believed that a sexual offense also occurred. We have just closed our case in front of the jury and we made our arguments there. The director of public prosecution. Edwin says on Wednesday both sides will know if John is proven guilty or innocent. Mr. Pinnock will close the case for the prosecution this afternoon. Tomorrow being a holiday, the court has advised us that she will sum up the case 
in front of the jury on Wednesday. And before the close of business on Wednesday, we will know whether Randy is guilty or whether he is found innocent or whether he's acquitted on some of the charges or found guilty on others. The lawyer says he believes that criminal cases are lingering for too long, which only prolongs the pain for both the family of the deceased and the accused. He hopes that can be fixed so that the healing process can be a little easier. I think it's appropriate for me to say that criminal cases are lingering far too long in the magistrate's court and in the high court. And it is not any fault of judges, magistrates, or clerks. It is just that our process is clogged. We must find some way to be able to, to handle this. And our attorney general currently is someone who has practiced at the bar, at the civil bar, and specifically at the criminal bar. So I am very hopeful that she will use her good office to sit with the stakeholders and see what we could do. Johnson was a former student of both St. Joseph Convent and Westerhall Secondary School. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet thomas reporting. Judy Benoit won her case after she was unceremoniously dismissed as supervisor of elections, a decision she challenged. And now a high court judge has ruled in her favor. We get more in this report. Former Supervisor of Elections, Ms. Judy Benoit, seeking damages from the state for wrongful dismissal from her post as Supervisor of Elections in 2013, has scored a victory against Governor General Dame Cecilia Grenada. High Court Judge Justice Royalston Glasgow made his ruling and granted Ms. Benoit costs to the sum of $5,000. Benoit was appointed as Supervisor of Elections in 2009, but she was dismissed by Dame Cecile in September 2013. Her sacking as supervisor of election came against the backdrop of claims that she refused to implement a directive from Lorna McPhail, the then permanent secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, which she felt would have compromised the integrity of the electoral office. She was called in by the Governor General and dismissed for failing to obey and was immediately replaced by then-permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Aaron Francois, who was also at the meeting. She retained the services of attorney Ruggles Ferguson to seek redress before the court on the grounds that her dismissal was improper and that Dame Cecile had acted unreasonably since she was not afforded the opportunity to respond to the charges levelled against her via a hearing. Miss Benoit later abandoned her claim against the Office of Attorney General for declaration of damages and the cost in respect of the action of the Cabinet. On October 17, 2022, Justice Glasgow ruled that the Governor General's decision to terminate the appointment of Ms. Benoit as Supervisor of Elections effective October 1, 2013, was in breach of natural justice, principles of fairness, and was unlawful, null, and void. For GBN News, I am Rena Pear Thomas reporting. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell is pleased with the reception given to him by member heads of the OECS after his maiden speech and the general discussions that followed during the recently concluded 72nd meeting of the OECS Authority in Montserrat. More in this report. During a recent interview with the Government Information Service, Prime Minister Mitchell said dialogues at the 72nd OECS meeting surrounded benefits for OECS countries within the region, with a focus on the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. He emphasized the OECS needs to focus on issues affecting member states. Things like our Supreme Court, Central Bank, uh, Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, to some extent, I think the population of the OECS take these things for, for granted because they've been around so long and they work so, so well. But we can't take them for granted because the strength really is in, in, in our combined and unified action. But crucially, it also recognizes that we need to do a lot more to foster 
uh, OECS integration and to deepen that process and to use our collective strengths to tackle some of the big challenges we, we face, like air travel. And uh, we actually had a town hall with the citizens of Montserrat on the final day and air travel was a major issue. Prime Minister Mitchell says there are also common challenges domestically facing member states. He suggested a regional approach to address common issues within individual communities. So you have the hemorrhaging of our nurses. All of us are facing the challenges of our nurses leaving en masse. In the case of Grenada, I think we've lost 75 already, 40, and there's a possibility of another 25 or so leaving. Um, and the same situation exists in, in Montserrat, the same situation exists in St. Kitts, you know, St. Vincent, St. Lucia. We're relying on Cuban assistance, for example. So it means it's a common problem, and there's an opportunity then for us to find a common regional solution, um, or at least mitigation measures to, to address it. So it re-emphasized that the need that the challenges we face are similar if not the same and therefore our ability to solve them will in fact require us to take a regional and not just a, a domestic or national approach to them and so i think it was very important for me and the other heads to to particularly given that we have relatively uh, in the case of saint lucia in the case of saint kitts and nevis in the case of, of grenada uh, new prime ministers um, so obviously we bring in a sense a relatively fresh perspective um, and in my case, practically coming from almost straight out of the, the private the private sector. He added that there are now three young prime ministers within the OECS, which all aid in introducing innovative ideas to the OECS authority. Um, compared to um, some of the, the, the other leaders, both within uh, the OECS and in CARICOM. And I think given the youthfulness of our population, I think we serve as examples uh, to the young population that all is not lost. Um, and there's a genuine opportunity for us to reimagine uh, what politics looks like, um, what engaging with our people look like, and what setting goals and aspirations and going after them look like. So I think from, from that perspective, um, I certainly think the people of the OECS expects of us um, that we will make a reconcerted effort to truly try and address some of the uh, challenges we face as a people uh, so that we can improve the lives of, of the citizens of the OECS. Addressing regional colleague heads of government at the opening ceremony of the 72nd meeting of the OECS Authority in Montserrat last Wednesday, Prime Minister Mitchell echoed the call for true regional integration. He added that the OECS region is yet to capitalize on the many far-reaching benefits of intra-OECS trading and the development opportunities to be derived from intra OECS investments. For GBN News, Beverly Telesford. October 1983 still stirs many emotions in Grenadians. 2023 will mark 40 years since the demise of the revolution, and government is putting plans together for a view with a view to beginning some level of healing in the nation. Cherry and Blackman Stephen reports. On October 19, 1983, former Prime Minister Morris Bishop, along with some of his cabinet ministers, and an unknown number of people died during what was termed a palace coup, staged by Deputy Prime Minister Bernard Code. Code was among 17 persons who were convicted for the killings. They were released from prison after serving time, following a resentencing in 2007, as ordered by the London-based Privy Council, Grenada's High Court of Appeal. In planning toward next year's remembrance, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, addressing the congregation during Thanksgiving service on Tuesday, disclosed some of the activities planned for 2023 to mark that occasion. He said his administration continues to give thanks for the progress made over the years. However, he said to move Grenada forward in a healthy and sustainable manner, they must address the healing of the nation. It is a somber holiday that is complex in its duality. The recognition of an immensely painful time in our history and a deep appreciation for the sacrifices of the American and Caribbean forces who put their lives on the line to help restore peace and stability. Prime Minister Mitchell said he looks forward to all citizens' participation in these activities, as well as participation from regional and international counterparts, seeking to heal past wounds and find meaning in this chapter of our Grenadian history. Prime Minister Mitchell said we will always be grateful for all the assistance in one of our darkest times that has helped to set Grenada back on its path of democratic stability. He notes that October 1983 is still remembered by many with great pain, while acknowledging that Thanksgiving Day holds a special significance for Grenada. In an effort to address the myriad of legitimate emotions that surround 
this period in our history, we will engage communities across the island in a week of activities that begins on 19th October and culminates on October 25th. This approach seeks to encompass the, significance, the significant events in this period and will provide an opportunity for increased dialogue, reflection, and introspection on one of our most formative events in our recent history. During October 19th, flag raising and wreath laying ceremony on Fort George, Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, Ron Redhead, announced that October 19th, 2023 will be declared a national holiday. Some of the activities for 2023, as announced by Minister Redhead, includes a respectable burial for the fallen of October 19, 1983. A monument commemorating the lives of the deceased will also be erected as part of government's plans to teach the youth about the Grenada Revolution. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. Rebecca Television Center, Grenada celebrated United Nations UN Day with activities targeting students and youth. More in this report. During this morning's flag-raising ceremony in observance of United Nations Day 2022, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell urged Grenadians to be reminded of the principles of the UN Charter, which speaks to peace and human rights. United Nations Day, or UN Day, commemorates the anniversary of the entry into force of the United Nations Charter in 1945, at the end of World War II, and the commitment to move away from global conflict and towards global cooperation. As we stand here at the cenotaph of our fallen soldiers of World War I, we are reminded once again of the long-lasting ills of war and reaffirm our commitment to the fundamental principles of human rights, peace, and social progress outlined in the UN Charter. Now, more than ever, we must hold true to those principles. Grenada is proud to be celebrating 48 years of partnership with the United Nations and as a member of the United Nations community and looks forward to the continued strengthening of this relationship. Prime Minister Mitchell says climate change and other global challenges have strengthened the need for UN support, which the NDC administration welcomes. My administration welcomes the efforts towards UN reform, which seeks to provide more tailored and efficient support to countries, given changing global challenges such as climate change and its effects on lives and livelihoods. I thank the UN Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Mr. Didier Trebek, for his leadership and vision in mounting a timely mission to Grenada in August of this year, which provided opportunities to discuss UN support in a broad range of areas. I am happy to report that these meetings have already started to bear fruit, paving the way for increased engagement and collaboration between in-country entities and the wider UN team. The Prime Minister called on UN member states to join towards committing to the Charter of the United Nations. As we collectively seek to adjust to a new normal following the COVID-19 pandemic and amidst the background of the aggression in Europe, with international implications for us all, I call on all members of the United Nations to ensure their renewed commitment to the Charter of the United Nations, the promotion of tolerance, universal human rights, peaceful coexistence, and inclusive socioeconomic growth. My admi administration remains committed to these values and stands firm in the belief that we are stronger when we work together. And so to the entire world, Happy United Nations Day. This morning's flag raising ceremony was a part of several hybrid activities by the Barbados and Eastern Caribbean Multi Country Office and Government of Grenada to commemorate the UN's milestone and Grenada's 48th anniversary of UN membership. On the 23rd and 24th of October, the Parliament building was lit in blue. The United Nations, Barbados, and the Eastern Caribbean has also partnered with the Grenada Broadcasting Network to hold a daily quiz for students on the work of the UN and a youth symposium held surrounding Grenada's transformational agenda and the sustainable development goals. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Former Chief Medical Officer Dr. Francis Martin is pushing for men to know their medical status to prevent severe consequences. He made this appeal while pointing out death comparisons between men and women. Cherian Blackman Stephen has this report. Fact. Men die before women in 
eight of the 10 leading cause of death in Grenada. Fact, men die from cancer much more than that of ladies. Fact, men are gonna die from a heart attack much more than their female counterparts. Fact, men are gonna die from strokes in a high proportion related to ladies. That was medical doctor Francis Martin. He said from an institutional point, men are left behind when it comes to their health. Delivering remarks at World Food Day ceremony on Friday, Dr. Martin said statistics from 2015 to 2018 show a decrease in the statistics of men dying from prostate cancer. He is calling for a men's health framework to set standards and close that gap for their health. Let us continue the national dialogue on men's health that has happened. I'm privileged to be able to see the data from 2012 to 2016 as it relates to prostate cancer. The data suggested that deaths from prostate cancer was increasing during that early time. But after looking at the data from 2015 to 2018, I think, we're beginning to see a leveling out, and in some instances, a dipping of the graph that relates to prostate cancer deaths. The diagnosis of prostate cancer is increasing still, but the deaths is not as much, because I believe men are now listening. I honestly believe that men are now listening. He sounded this warning to men that they need to check. Never Never before in my 20 years of practice have I seen so many men show up in my office for their general check. And men are now even becoming bolder to say, I need to check on my testosterone. That's another national conversation that we need to have because our testosterone level is dropping significantly in our male population, interfering with our manhood, interfering with our ability as men to feel confident in our lives. So let the conversation continue. Dr. Martin is advocating for men to be more aware of what they consume as this is key to keeping healthy. He is urging that they focus on three main minerals, calcium to increase testosterone levels and muscle function, omega-3 to protect and strengthen the heart, and magnesium for muscle recovery. His suggestion is to seek these key minerals from natural foods. Cherry and Blackman, Stephen, GBN News. GBA News brings you an update on Royan Smith, the owner of Bonanza Stables. He claims that he is yet to receive his license and is now between a rock and a hard place. Rina Ped Thomas reports. Those of you who remember Ryan Smith, owner of Bonanza Stables, who weeks ago cried out to the public on the situation faced in getting his license to operate his horse riding business. The horseman, as he is affectionately known, says that he may have to close his doors as he is still unable to obtain his license. Smith explains that after GBN aired his story a few weeks ago, he was contacted by the PS of Tourism and officials from the Grenada Tourism Authority to quickly address the matter and as such the decision was made that a veterinarian from the Ministry of Agriculture will evaluate his horse for a second opinion. But they still take about about two weeks and then the veterinarian come he and another person from the Ministry of Agriculture when the people come up here they watch my animals they see well they don't know what they're talking about because my animal is looking real nice in fact they watch my pony and say ask me how old the pony is i tell them 20 22 years and they say whoa you are looking nice so you know and it was a good vibe so the, the, the vet tell me he's gonna write up a report and give it to tourism and then tourism gonna get back to me and i wait again they take about two weeks again and then get back to me with, with a letter and the letter stating that i had to get a vaccine for my animals, even though they know my horses were vaccinated already by the professionals in the country from the other institution. Smith says that he later received a letter from the ministry in the matter. The letter stated that in order to obtain his license, the horses must be fully vaccinated to include Eastern and Western equine episeptinitis and West Nile virus, which can cause death in human. 
it also stated that the horses should be dewarmed at least four times a year. Ryan said that his horses are already up to date with most of the guidelines, but claims that in search of the vaccine that was outlined, he was told it is not available in Grenada. I contact the, um, the, 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 the veterinarian and asked him, well, how I'll get a hold of this vaccine? And he tell me to go back to the people from the other institution that they claim failed my horses before. So when I contact the, the, the other institution, the people tell me that this vaccine is unnecessary, it doesn't exist here, and the diseases they're talking about don't exist here and it never existed here. No animals in Grenada never had this, so there's no need for this vaccine, and they don't have it. And the man tell me they, them is the people that have it. The business owner says that he has since tried to get another meeting with the ministry on how it can be fixed, but is yet to get an audience. He is in distress as his business is now falling apart, especially now in the tourist season when he makes money. He explains that his business is not only affecting his livelihood, but that of others. Right now they're affecting my business real bad. I mean, we just come out of, under a pandemic and the COVID situation mash up my business real bad and i just trying to catch myself. And then people coming up with this kind of thing. So to me, it's like the Ministry of Tourism and Grenada Tourism Authority getting on worse than COVID. They're treating me worse than COVID treat me because they're trying to take me out of business. And you can't move Grenada forward that way because when you're, when you're doing that to me, it's not only me that getting affected. I mean, here, look at youth men and things that has depend on me for a walk. Whether to be a tour guide or to come and clean out the stable or to train a horse or something, a lot of little work did us get. And right now, I have to lay off everybody because it's been two months now and I can't really get no work. When people Ryan says that he is still in debt and needs to pay back the bank and hopes that something can be done soon as he is open to any solution at this point. GBN tried to contact the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Tourism on the matter and the lead vet in the Ministry of Agriculture who visited the Bonanza stable, but was told they were both out of office. The newsroom will make other attempts to contact them to get a more in-depth understanding of the issue. For GBN News, I'm Rina Pet Thomas reporting. It's Soka Parang in the basket, the spice basket, Saturday, 5th November, featuring from Trinidad, Grunta, Baron, Darling, look, it's Christmas, a special time of year. From Grenada, Karaku String Band, Lele Le. Lele. Oh, yeah. and Leke and Steve Theodore. Get your early bird ticket for $60 after you pay 80 and more at the door. And are available at Chucky's Bar, Brendan on the Terminal, Grenada Optical in St. George's, Kittens Pharmacy, Granville, Kittens Healthcare, Grand Ants, Shai's Bar, St. Mark's, Nick and Bites, Qual, St. David's Pharmacy, Calico Shopping Center, Main Street, Sutiers. It's another Chucky's promotion. Affordable quality products delivered to you via superb service. We are superb distributors, wholesalers, and authorized agents for trust products you know and love like Rika juices pure heaven products bibin diapers new bright laundry detergent allegra pasta and more contact superb distributors at 435-2948 for superb quality and service Do you know that you can lower your electricity bill by switching to energy efficient appliances? By switching to energy efficient appliances, you can help lower your energy usage. Your refrigerator, for example, is amongst the highest energy consuming appliances within your home as it remains running throughout the day and night. Switching to an energy efficient refrigerator can lower your electricity bill by up to 40%. As an individual consumer, I cannot impact global fuel prices. However, I can ease the burden of rising fuel rates by switching to energy efficient appliances. What can you do? Grenlec, energizing our Grenada.
Welcome back, viewers and listeners, uh, to this segment uh, as we we look at the buzz, uh, what's buzzing on the social uh, media platforms. And there are some stories, some, you know, there's one that stands out to me. I really like this one. It says, from a Girl Scout brownie in Grenada to a deputy commanding general in the U.S. Army, a Grenadian woman tells a story of success within the U.S. Armed Forces. And um, uh, my television guy is going to pull that uh, clip up and we'll have a talk. Tell me how you feel about this, you know? It is often said that, um, you know, Grenadians are excelling in almost all facets of life and places you know a guy said to me uh, the last time he said if you open a tin of corned beef sometimes you might find a Grenadian and <laughs> nonetheless let's uh, let's listen to her story and um, then we'll, we'll we'll have a chit chat on it and then we'll also look at um, you know, GUT concerns of, uh, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure repairs being done in schools and so forth. We'll look at that also. So let's, let's listen to the clip. Grenadian-born Dr. Jennifer A. Marast Host entered the United States Army in 1997 and served in many different medical units, taking care of soldiers and commanding medical units as far as the Middle East. Fast forward 25 years later, on November 4, 2022, Colonel Promotable Marast Host will be promoted to Brigadier General. Jibian spoke to Colonel Promotable Marast Host in an exclusive interview on Friday. She gave a background of her career as a civilian emergency medicine physician. I was born in Grenada. I grew up in Grenada and uh, I left when I was about 10 and Grenada has always been my home. So I entered the army as a captain and what I entered the army to take care of service members. So I joined after I finished medical school. You know, when I entered the military, it was through being a doctor and would be taking care of service members. And then 9-11 hit and I was, as an ER doctor, what I do is trauma. And so, you know, I deployed, uh, to Afghanistan. Colonel Promotable Marast Host gave an overview of what her new role would entail. This new position, it is uh, the Deputy Commanding General for the 807 Medical Command Deployment Support. And in that aspect, I am responsible for advising the Commanding General, which is a two-star general, um, on everything medical. So we call it all things medical. She said the moment is surreal, coming from an island as small as Grenada to being ranked so highly within the U.S. forces. That is, that is amazing because I will tell you, with this new rank, I, I still see myself as that little Grenadian girl that was in the Brownie Scouts. And for obtaining this level of a rank and being a Grenadian. For me, it really shows that Grenadians are, we're committed, we are dedicated, we are accomplishing um, the foundation that we get in our primary schools uh, really, really, gives you that foundation to build on. She had some words of advice for Grenadians wishing to pursue a future in the U.S. Army. Um, the Army really provides you with an opportunity for schooling. It provides you an opportunity for training. Um, you know, I, I entered after I was done with my schooling, right? Um, but if you are having difficulty in meeting the financial requirements or so for schooling, join the military. I mean, it literally provides you schooling, training, uh, you know, home, housing. Um, it, it is a great opportunity for you to learn for you to be disciplined. Maras Toast will be the first African-American woman serving in the U.S. Army Reserve Medical Corps and the first Grenadian to reach the rank of Brigadier General. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford.
Cool. Wow. My pores raised. I feel proud. Uh, sadly, though, I did not get to, um, to hear exactly where in Grenada she originates from. Can someone tell me? Give us a call. Tell us how you feel about this. I mean, this is a great accomplishment for Grenada. Grenada is, you know, is it. Some folks may say we, we're not even... You know, we're not even a dot on the map, <laughs> but but there we go. Folks, it's 18 minutes after 7. Give me a call, 435-2041. Firstly, I would like to know, is there anybody out there who knows where she's from in Grenada? And tell us how you feel about this. Wow. This is good stuff. I'd like to say good morning to all the rank and file of the RGPF. Good morning. And Grenadians, you heard that. Um, you know, that was some very good advice. You know, very good advice there. Um, you know, go to the army. Yeah. Give me a call. 435-2041. Do you know which part of Grenada she's from? The first African-American woman serving in the U.S. Army Reserve. Wow, the first Grenadian to reach the rank of Brigadier General. I like this, I like this. Uh, we've got a caller. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? Morning. I'm not sure where she's from, but I just want to see the things that she would have said. It kind of it brings back a little off. My memory growing up, I've had the exposure to brownies and to girl guides. And I must say that, well, among other groups that you would have been encouraged to be a part of, and I must say that those stepping stones or those things that have been planted in our lives from those groups, they really would have taken us a far way, a good way, a long way, and has caused us to excel. And what the lady is saying there is no, it's nothing new. Yes, Grenadians excel wherever they go. We may not have much, but we have love, we have affection, we have something that maybe cannot be found in any part of the world. So I just want our, well, our Grenadian public, persons listening, young and old, well, whatever age you may be, take a bow. And we just want to thank our full fathers, our full parents, and everybody who would have chipped in to have this instilled in us. I want to encourage, encourage young persons, join a group, you know. There are certain things that are taught in certain groups and organizations that you wouldn't find it on the street. You know, you, you, there are certain things you may find, but there are certain good things that you would not find there. So be a part of a group. Join something. It's never too late. It's never too early. Okay. It's All right. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 21 minutes after 7 o'clock. Be a part of a group. Yeah, the phone line is going crazy now. Good morning. Yeah. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? You know, I good to see you because, you know, every time I see you, I always ask you if you're in there, you know what I mean? Yeah, so you know who that is. Always win air this morning. We're doing good, but you know what's nice? What we do today? Uh -huh. We got love. And you know what love is? God. Right. So God is love. So that's all we have here, God in the year. Good. Nice. God bless you. Have a nice day. She's time in the morning. We're saying that word love. Yes. And I know the back the word of God said God is love. We are doing with God. Do not love for God is love. Okay. And we got love. Yes. And I'm you blessed. you love me and I love you more. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> I hope I take that when I see I think it's so good. You know what I mean? That's you. So you have a wonderful day. You too, my dear. God bless and you. And just keep taking love for the whole day. All right. Thank God. Good. Nice. Bye-bye. Have, have a good day. Good one. Bye bye. Good. Uh -huh. good. Well, that's my good friend. Four three five two zero four one. That's the number to call. I wish somebody could identify which part of Grenada that lady was from. Though. Good morning. Good morning to my 
Darling brother, how you do? I am good. How are you, Miss Jacob? I'm fine. Fine, fine, fine. By the grace of God. Okay. And you know the group I love? You see the Red Cross? The long time Red Cross? Oh my God. That group is a very, 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 very good group. Okay. All right. That group. It teach you to do everything, especially if you live by yourself alone. Okay, okay. They tell you how to put off your radio. They tell you how to put up your, how to push up your window. If you find your window doing them thing, how to fix it. They telling you when you dry your mat, don't put it, don't heave it in the sink. You have a bucket of water. You put it down in the water because suppose when you. You heaving it in the sink. Suppose you don't reach in the sink, you reach on the blind. Huh? Your okay. house catch a fire. All right. That is the way Red Cross, Red Cross member, as a Red Cross member since in the 70s. I have 75 years now. You understand me? Okay. Red Cross member is very, 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 very good. So, and you, my wonderful brother, you have a wonderful day, and I love your program on the morning. Thank you very much, Ms. Zika. so nice. Right, nice. Oh, especially those songs and things, those uh, hymns and them. Uh -huh. Oh, my God, good. it touched me so well. Nice. Well, I'm glad I could do that for you, right? <laughs> okay, darling. Okay, so you, you have, have a good day. You have a blessed day. God bless you, and I love you. Bye-bye, darling. I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> 24 minutes after 7 o'clock. I hope my wife is not feeling jealous this morning. I'm getting so much love, boy. <laughs> Good, 435-2041. We're going to take one final call on this segment. We take a commercial break, and then we come back and look at a different buzz. I just wish someone could have said where the lady was from. You know, I'd like to pay homage to that community. I'm seeing the phone ringing. Let me see. Good morning. Yes, we stop in I think the lady is from St. Andrew. I can't remember which area. And somewhere else, I know you mentioned where she was from. But I don't remember, but I think it's from St. Andrews. Okay, okay. And you know, only, you see, uh, we a lot of us talk about God, eh? but most of the time, God is only in our lips. You know what the scripture says? It said, these people who honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. God wants us to honor him with our hearts. And I want to encourage us as Canadians, don't just talk about God with our mouth. Let us invite him into our hearts and he let him change us. Let him transform us. Let him give us what is real love. Not just love in mouth, but love in action. You know, we need to transform, but it cannot be except Christ is in our hearts. Have a blessed day, day. You too, my dear. Have a good one, yeah? Good bye-bye. All right, folks, 26 minutes after 7, we take a commercial break. We'll be back after these messages. The National Insurance Scheme continues to make it easy to access our services using the MyNIS online platform. Now we are introducing a new feature that allows you to submit your benefit claims from the convenience of your smart devices. No paper, no hassle. All you have to do is log in to my.nisgrenada.org, select claims, fill out the relevant information, and click submit. We'll take it from there. It's that simple and that easy. Submit a claim from the comfort of your home as you rest and recuperate. Enjoy the convenience of faster claim processing and monitor the status of your claim every step of the way. We are excited to introduce this new feature to better serve you. NIS is changing the game and the way you make your claim. Access anywhere and anytime with My NIS Online. 
do more with your new GUT Credit Union Visa Debit Card, which gives you access to your cash at any Connex or Visa certified ATMs locally and internationally. Make your payments with a tap of your card using the contactless feature and have the freedom to make purchases locally, online or overseas whenever you travel anywhere Visa is accepted. Experience the enhanced security fraud protection through the Visa chip technology. If you don't have your new GUT Credit Union Visa International Debit Card, speak to any one of our representatives today to do more. Your new GUT Credit Union Visa International Debit Card. A smarter way to access your cash. More smart, more secure. stations. Weathergard Pro. For every project, there's only one Pro. Let's mingle and jingle. You mean jingle and mingle, right? Does it really matter? Mingle and jingle, the mid-morning program that will drive the Christmas season. Weekdays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Classic Radio, GBN Television, and all GBN social media platforms. It's where the deals of the season are, where the Christmas music is played, holiday traditions are relived, and where all the fun is. Mingle and jingle. Or jingle and mingle. Mid-mornings from November 14th to December 23rd only on the GBN Network. Made possible by Hello. What's the whole rums? Hard on plus. Judy Free Caribbean Holding. Ace Hardware. Gittins Healthcare. And Grenville Credit Union. Welcome back, my viewers and listeners. And um, yeah, as we do the buzz this morning, it's 29 minutes on to 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock workers, you should be close to work if you're not there already, all right? Remember, you've got to be there at least 15 minutes before you start working, all right? You don't get there for 8. You start work at 8, okay? All right, the other story that we, um, that's uh, of some interest to uh, people outside is... Um, Officials from the Grenada Union of Teachers say they have seen improvements in some schools that are under infrastructural repair, but others are stagnant. Now, Leste RC is one of the schools the GUT is concerned about. Uh, we'll have that clip run and um, we'll, we'll talk about it subsequently. President of the Grenada Union of Teachers, Jude Bartholomew, says infrastructural work on schools across Grenada, Karikou, and Pitimatnik has placed students and teachers at temporary inconvenience. Bartholomew said a recent trip by the union to the Sister Isle revealed there are serious issues at the Leste RC school that needs government's attention. We visited as a national executive um, Karikou last week, and there are some schools that are on major projects, for example, 
Leicester RSC School. And they're doing some a program there with the extension and the renovation of the toilet facilities at the school. And they are having some hiccups there. That program needs government attention, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Communications and Works. We're not to show what is the problem with the contractor or contractual arrangement. We have on the compound there on the scene portable toilets for teachers and also for the students. And with the problem with construction is that the con construction have been slowed down for whatever reasons. So we are asking government to move expeditiously to see if they can solve that. Bartholomew says the lack of adequate toilet facility can create health problems for teachers and students. He says parents are also hesitant in sending their children to school. And that is the problem there. I think the major hiccups there, you have the staff, you have the teachers who use, I think, one facility for um, um, portable toilet for both male and female. And you know what is the problem, especially with, with females coming to their monthly business and those toilets, they don't flush one time. So when you're going to the toilet there for both students, even students and teachers, you are seeing people business. And these are some health issues to, to, to address because you have teachers, even and students holding back the natural um, bodily functions to urinate and the past pieces and such, they hold it back or sometimes you have teachers having to go to uh, another next door neighbor or somewhere else to see if they can do that and that is creating a real problem so much so that there are some um, parents that are hesitant in sending their, their children to school. The president says the project is currently on hold and is calling for a quick intervention. So we did an engagement with the um, Ministry of Education Public Communications and Works to know what is the problem? I did have a discussion with the contractor, with the principal of Leicester RC School and members of staff, and they cannot really um, pin down what is the reason for the hold up in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the project. So all we ask in here, we know that it's creating some serious problem, and if that continue to happen, it means that the GUT, Grenada Union of Teachers, for its members would have to go further and probably take some serious action to get attention if we cannot get it on a natural basis. So I, I don't know what is the budgetary allocation for the school and if there are any problems there but we're asking the Ministry of Education to pay some serious problems and to do that quickly with um, let's say RC school. For GBN News, I am Rina Pet Thomas reporting. Thank you very much. Wow. My partner Jude is getting on, boy. <laughs> 25 minutes on to 8 o'clock, folks. Um, well, we know that, um, you know, some of the schools, well, not some, most of the schools on the island, uh, they are in need of some touching up, yeah. Um, I don't know what the problem is, but as uh, the president of the GUT intimated, it is, um, some are very deplorable and um, needs urgent attention. So he's calling on the relevant authorities um, to, you know, see how quickly they can expedite uh, the repairs and, and so forth. Um, yeah, let me hear what you think about that. 435-2041. It's topical. Yep. 25 minutes on to 8 o'clock. We've got a caller. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Innocent. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. How about you? I am not too bad myself. Now, that story that you just um, played there, I think that is really unacceptable. My thing is, people are responsible for this. And the the, the role that the, the GUT plays in having these workers there, and I think not only the workers, but they're concerned about the students, what is coming from the authorities? I mean, I, I, I am ready to stand up with the teacher and say, what kind of nonsense is this? I always, people always find me thinking about this, this kind of nonsense. What is the story from the authorities? That is what I want to hear. There must be a conversation, so the people must know what is going on. You can't, don't know what is going on. And this is my position. The authorities need to communicate and see what is happening there. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Thanks. Wow. There must be some dialogue. Well, I, I think I think that um, you know some form of engagement will take place, you know, in the not too distant future. Good morning, a person. Good morning. I would like to ask a question. 
all that I've heard concerning the schools and toilet and teachers are being inconvenienced years ago at uh, some nearby house to uh, use a toilet. Was all of this um, going on with the last government? There's a reason why I'm asking this question. Okay, and are you expecting an answer from me? Uh, no, I am asking, is it something that this present government has inherited? I, I would I would want to think so. I don't I don't think um the, the current administration is in office for less than what about four months. I don't think all, all the schools would have you know gotten to this deplorable stage in such a short space of time. So I think it's it's a you know it's it's a problem that was there before. Yeah, um, and I am I'm, I'm supposing or suggesting that that was there. You see, the reason for asking this question, the tendency to. Uh, criticize, criticize this present regime is very likely. And uh, we should put blame where blame should be. And it just shows that the last administration cared nothing, absolutely nothing, about teachers and children and the like. So those who are to make critics must be careful not to lay any blame on this uh, present regime. All I do uh, hope is that the present regime can get things uh, working and have let the children be. Hello? Yeah, I'm here with you. And uh, let the children and teachers be comfortable as far as health is concerned. Because this is all nonsensical. You can't tell me that such a thing is going on. We hear the budget, we hear this, we hear that. And of course, the last budget that I've been hearing, very little allocation has been made for education. I mean, all right, um, I'll address my case here. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much, Carla. Good. 21 minutes on to 8 o'clock. That's the time. I mean, I must confess, you know, in traversing across the country, I've, you know, I'm seeing quite a lot of work being done on some schools, especially the schools in St. David, you know, so I don't know. Good morning. Morning. How are you this morning? Not too bad, but I am upset with the first caller. And when they behave like that, you know what they support. Because this government just gets into office. So how could you run any more about the authority you can tell you? The authority needs comment more than mess. So they're too wicked in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> He's passionate. 20 minutes on to 8 o'clock. Good morning to all the bus drivers. As a matter of fact, all commuters, good morning. Don't forget to be careful on the nation's road. Drivers, please drive with due care and attention. Good morning. Good morning, Innocent. How are you doing? I am fine. How are you? I'm blessed. And highly Innocent, favored. Yeah, my brother. I find the union and leaders and them very harsh on this government. Innocent, if I give you a list to go and make some grocery for me, you take the list and you look at the grocery. What are supposed to give after not the money? Nice. And I find they must realize that the government is supposed to you uh, work with a budget, and we don't have a budget really yet. So I find they must take it light. I find it too harsh. Okay. Bye bye. All right, thanks. That's what I love about this place, man. I love this. People speak of their mind. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm good, and how are you? I am alive and so thankful. Uh, uh, supporting some of the callers because I find Jude being harsh on the government. I listen to him and the program, and I find he being harsh. He, 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 he want to give them pressure. You have to understand that only teachers and need things the whole country needs, you know. Mm -hmm. And when he's talking about the school, he's making it look like the, the government come in and they ain't doing nothing about it. They just there for months. So the words that come from him, we have to be careful. Yeah, life and death. Yeah, we have to be careful with the words that are coming from your mouth because how he's saying it and how people interpreting it is like, he, he ready? Because you hear the word he say. Oh, if they won't do it speedily, we're going to have to take some harsh action. So, like, we go and demonstrate again. Okay. You know? Okay. And this is what I pick up from him. I listen it, and I was very upset listening to him because he, he, he's speaking like his only teachers in the country. A lot of people need things too. 
Yeah. You know, I'm saying the teachers don't need, but they have to understand. You're speaking like, I'm just fighting for the teachers. You're due to the past government. Yeah, you win. And you come back like thinking you could do it in this one again because I know you're trying to shop yourself or something. Come on, you have to stop that. Okay. Too bad-minded? Okay. That's what I'm <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you, Carla. Have a good day, right? You too. Good mess. <laughs> the passion in the voice. Good morning to my good friend, Mr. Jude Bartholomew. You okay, Papi? How's teacher Yvette doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, good. Welcome to the program. Yes. Well, I think, um, yes, the gentleman who just come over a little bit harsh, he want, he think Mr. Jude, or uh, Bartholomew, have been harsh, but, um, we cannot um, blame government, government. From the time I know myself as a young boy from the time of Gary time, I'll be, we are always blaming government. Government cannot do just everything. Now the Catholic Church, we say Catholic school, right? It's a huge, massive organization, religion. And I think they could give some assistance in, in that um, area to help because this is... Um, an area where you re it's really need to be, you know, toilet and so on, bathroom is something that is very, very important. So this has to take very immediate steps to fix up that. It's not something that you play wrong. So it's not a matter of blaming past government and blaming this government. I think something needs to be done immediately, speedily, okay. Okay? okay? I was going up the road some time ago with a gentleman, and then he wanted to use the bathroom, and there was no bathroom around, and he had to rush in the bush quick. He couldn't almost um, dirty my vehicle. So, you know, this is something that is, you don't have to be done immediately. So that's my contribution this morning. Thank you very much, Carla. Have a good one. Yes, good, nice. 16 minutes on to 8 o'clock. We take a commercial break, and when we come back, uh, there's this one that I like. Um, it's important. This one is relevant to the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, says that while they are encouraging Grenada and the rest of the Caribbean to go fully digital with their operations, they are mindful that the populations need to be educated on cyber security and cyber hygiene. On the flip side of the commercial break, we'll discuss this one. Of vibes and energy, of course. Well, I've got just that. Hi, my name is Gary Mr. Smooth, and I'm inviting you to join me on the Hot Morning Show on Hot 98.5, 98.7 FM. Weekdays, Monday to Friday, 6 to 10 in the morning. I've got a healthy dose of your favorite and most infectious hits sampled with information, news, laughter, and all the other ingredients that go into making the hottest morning show on the radio. The morning heat. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit us up on WhatsApp, 435-7517. We've got topics. We've got discussions. Calls, voice notes, and so much more. But I can't tell you everything. You gotta tune in. The Hot Morning Show on Hot FM 98.5, 98.7. With yours truly, Gary, Mr. Smooth. Kaboom! It is important to know what your road signs and markings mean. The zigzag lines means you should not park in the marked area. Parking is allowed inside the solid white lines on the edge of the road. Remember, look out for pedestrians. Pedestrians, be sure the vehicle comes to a complete stop before crossing. These tips can save your life. These tips can make our roads safer for all users. Be safe, be seen, be smart. A message from the Traffic Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force. 
You know, one day I woke up and you know they painted a set of pedestrian crossing all along the streets. You know, nobody told us how to use that thing properly. I know how. You're serious? Every safe, good driver knows about these things. As a driver, you have to be very attentive. You know you're coming up close to a pedestrian cross. You start slowing down immediately, looking to see if there's any pedestrian on the side getting ready to cross. If there is, you stop on the line that is a certain distance before the crosswalk. Then you would see the pedestrian put their hands out, looking directly at you, indicating that they are going to cross. And only when you have come to a complete stop, that is when they will quickly and safely cross to the other side. And then you continue happily on your journey. Stop, look, hand out, eye contact, wait for pedestrian to cross. Then you happily continue on your journey. This message is brought to you by this group of insurance companies, the Traffic Advisory Body and the Traffic Department. Welcome back viewers and listeners and um, as I hinted before our final buzz we're gonna look at this morning it has to do with um, the issue of going fully digital as it says the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank uh, says that while they are encouraging Grenada and the rest of the Caribbean to go fully digital with their operations they are mindful that the populations need to be educated on cyber security and cyber hygiene. We will take a, that clip and then we'll have a little discussion on it. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Comprehensive digital transformation is essential to improve efficiency, effectiveness, and productivity, both organization-wise and nationally, to foster innovation and job creation. In Grenada, many reports and roadmaps have been prepared to address either government-related digital transformation, such as on the e-government, or with a national focus on realizing a digital society. However, over the years, individual initiatives in these these plans have been pursued and are in various stages of completion, which has resulted in a number of gaps and challenges. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antwine, says one of these issues is cybersecurity, which can cause serious damage to a country. And, they, and so part of building out a digital economy is not just the enablers, which is like skills and finance and the platforms and the connectivity, but also the safeguards cyber security, data protection, data privacy. Now, that project that I just mentioned, we have leads, so on Digital Finance, ECCB, on Skills, OECS Commission, on Telecoms, Connectivity, ECTEL, Eastern Caribbean Telecom Telecommunications Authority, and on Cyber Security, Cyber Security, CARICOM Impacts, leads. You cannot build out if you don't put those things in place. Going forward, Antoine says employees and the rest of the population need to be educated on proper cyber hygiene in order to mitigate or alleviate the issue. Listen, you have to deal with skills, giving people the skills, digital skills to actually navigate. People have to get comfortable with this. So people tell you, well, I don't want this digital thing, I want paper, I don't trust this thing, I don't know any. Hello, 
we had to use digital during the pandemic for work for worship for play for shopping for we can do this we got this right we are able to learn the technology. Despite this, the governor says Grenada needs to overcome these challenges and push on. So it's called cyber hygiene. So during the pandemic, we were all in hygiene. Wash your hands, wash your hands, the mask and so on. In this cyber world, cyber hygiene. There's certain things you don't click on when you see it because that is going to create a problem. Every month in our town hall, our staff meeting, we have a presentation on cyber security to our staff. Because at the organizational level, they will tell you the weakest link is often inside. Staff unknowingly, inadvertently, clicking on things, accepting emails that they should not. That kind of training and education has to happen. So you're right. You're right. But we're committed to doing our part. Now, I'm not going to suggest the central bank by itself will solve that. We are going to do our part. We are as a responsible uh, uh, entity, a central bank. But we are working with partners, OECS Commission, the governments, and so on, because we have to we have to get everybody on board. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. Thank you very much, Rena. All right. Well, folks, um, it's evident everywhere you go now, especially in the financial sector. Um, Everything is almost, almost computerized. Um, have you noticed uh, most of the financial institutions, the banks, the credit unions, they're sort of moving away from the person-to-person -person relationship. The banking, the financing has gotten rather impersonal. Um, but the question is, do you think we as a people are quite ready for this? Some people are still, you know, timid as it relates to dealing with financial transactions online and so forth. So do you think we are ready? Or is this the time when we should embrace this and get ready? Good morning, caller. Good morning. Hello? All right, good. 435-2041. Yeah. I mean, every almost everywhere you go now. That's that's the way business is done online. Everything is online. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I am alive and thankful. How are you? Okay. Well, I think um, I, I, we have to get into it as what the gentleman says. We have to take our time and learn about it. And we can have to be skeptical because not everyone is at the same level. And then. With the school thing, I think is you can't just blame the government. A lot of this come come from responsibility of the engineers, planner of drawing, people to check the project to make sure that it's right. And if they're not doing the right thing, and if they're not bringing proper information to the right people, then a lot of things will be go uh, very harsh and strange. But um, so that is some of the things. But what I really want to take talk about is like today I just feel very relaxed and like I got a like the lady I got a five star general because I was able to meet meet my prime minister yesterday in a very easy way which I thought it would be hard to see him and I was able to talk to him and get an assist on him and because we are very privileged here in these countries that we can just get local and go and talk to your prime minister. So, like that, imagine you're in them big countries where you can't see the president and you can't see this and this, that. And we are very privileged. Okay. So, I, I feel real good about it. All right. It makes me feel like when I was young, when I was able to go to Mr. Gary. Many times I was small, I hold Mr. Gary hand and I was able to talk to him. Okay. So it makes well, I'm happy I'm happy you were able to make that connection with your PM yesterday, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I have to talk to him sometime again. All right. I well. was so excited I couldn't speak the seriousness with him. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kola. Good. Mm -hmm. Accessibility. That's And you know, it's only last night I was talking to somebody on this. You know, yeah, only last night. Good morning. Miss Moon digitalization. No, the Bible did not mention strictly digitalization, but to me, things that the Bible mentioned, this is the fulfillment. But it is heading to a very destructive path. It is heading 
it is a footpath or the night. According to the Bible, when you read it from the book of Daniel and you read from the book of Revelation and you put things together, this digitalization is so very destructive. And that's why people are something from new God. They're going to become a time when you will not be able to access your phone. The one thing I discovered recently is that the word God says there will be a famine, not for bread and water, but for the word of God. So, Carla, let me add, let me ask you this. All right, let me. Ask, do you think it's it's a step in the wrong direction with this digitalization stuff? I'm not saying it's just, it is. Well, it is biblically it is wrong, but this is what the the Lord said would happen in these days. This okay. is the fulfillment of prophetic things, and that's why people need to get ready and prepare themselves because sometimes you will not be able to buy or sell except you have some digital connection. You won't be able to live without digital connection. Okay. This is what said. And not only they digitalizing things, they want to digitalize people. Internet of things is what we have now, but they are working assiduously to the internet of you. Of what they want to put a chip in your body and they, then manipulate you from anywhere in the world. I, I wouldn't let them do that. Want <laughs> this is what the technology is heading. All right. This is not what people are looking about. Okay. So, yes, this is what they're going to do because this is what I've talked about. But we need to be prepared to meet God. Uh-huh. Therefore, the time will come when you will not be able to buy anything. Okay. And so it makes me want to die. Then uh-huh. you can't get to eat. If you can't get anything to do because you're not digital, mm-hmm. you, your demise have come. Okay. This is where the world is going. All right. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right, folks, this is where we've got to wrap it up now. It's uh, just a couple of seconds away from 8 o'clock. We've got to join the BBC for a bulletin of news. Thank you very much for those of you who participated. And um, should the good Lord spare our lives, we'll have another program of the Snate here tomorrow. And um, thank you, thank you.